This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is a baseball betters and a baseball fans dream come true tonight because we have Jacob DeRome facing off with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And that is kind of a postseason preview. Maybe not from the Dodgers perspective with Tyler Anderson starting, but DeGrom, Dodgers going head to head out in New York. That's a pretty fun spot. And I do think there are some good ways to get some betting exposure to this game. If you want a little bit extra on the line while you're watching for tonight, we'll break that down. We'll break down some money lines like for today, a, a couple strikeout props where I'm showing some value. And then we'll dive into some racing for this weekend too, to get you set for both NASCAR cup series at Darlington and Formula One in the Dutch Grand Prix. Welcome on into covering the spread that's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to take a look at a, a wide variety of subjects for today. Typically, our college football preview will be on Wednesdays. I'll be talking with Dr. Ed Fang and Parker Fleming tomorrow to break down uh, their favorite bets for week one across college football that'll actually be up probably tonight around seven o'clock or so we're going to record that this afternoon so i will have that go live around seven or so tonight in case you want to get in on those spreads uh, before they can move so again make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread if you're around want a podcast to listen to tonight plan around that one should be up around 7 p.m eastern or so we'll talk to ed and parker then to get you set for week one of college football like i said for today though MLB money lines, MLB strikeout props, a couple stuff, uh, for, a couple things from that, that Mets Dodgers game, and then some NASCAR and Formula One later on. Before we get to the money lines, though, NFL kickoff is still a few weeks away, but you can get on the action now on FanDuel Sportsbook with their NFL Super Win bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl future winner bet will get $5 back for each win their team has during the regular season. There are also a ton of other futures markets available like team win totals, division winners, player props, and so much more. There is no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sports book and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $50. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-899-79. In uh, Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. Let's dig into these MLB money lines for today. My mom, my numbers are actually showing value in six different money lines for today, which is a larger number than I typically like, but I'm not willing to bet all those personally. I go through where my numbers see value, dig in, decide, do I agree? Do I not? And then pass on the ones where I don't agree, bet the ones where I do. The two where I agree most for today are the Mets and the White Sox. The Mets minus 156 against the Dodgers. This has moved from open. It opened at minus 135, but... I believe that movement is in the right direction and think it should go even further as the day goes along. I've got the Mets win odds for tonight at 66.7%. Their implied odds, 60.9%. So still a good amount of cushion there to go despite the movement. And this is because of how good Jacob deGrom has looked. In the five stars deGrom has made, his skill interactive ERA is 1.31, which is disgusting, absurd, unreal. Just for some context on that, we got Garrett Cole on the bounce for tonight. His skill interactive ERA in his most relevant sample, which is his past uh, 13 starts, is 2.70. DeGrom, 1.31. His expected ERA, under 2. So even if, you know, we're looking at, oh, okay, you got a, an ERA around 2.5, maybe that'll get worse. Nope, doesn't seem like it. <laughs> he's pretty good. Uh, he's got a 45% strikeout rate. DeGrom has looked... Every bit of DeGrom in his first couple starts back, which is a true delight to all of us. Other side here is Tyler Anderson. He does a good job with contact suppression, so his results aren't entirely fluky. But it is a tough spot for him facing the Mets here. I'm showing value out to minus 200 on this game. 
I think right now at minus 156, there's still enough there to bet this one. I think if you open your app and it says minus 170, I'd probably still be okay with that too. I think the Mets are just in a good spot here with DeGrom on the bump. It's hard to fully wrap your head around how good he is. And yeah, the Dodgers are tough, but so are the Mets. So to me, I'm going to go in on the Mets here at minus 156 and bet on them to topple the Dodgers here. We'll talk more about DeGrom in just a second. But first, let's talk about the White Sox here. Their number has also moved a tiny bit, but I don't think it's moved enough. Uh, they're at minus 196 now. You can get minus 190 at uh, at least Caesars. I saw this morning, you can get minus 190. By the White Sox, it's 76.1% to win this game. Their implied odds, if we take the FanDuel one at minus 196, are 66.2%. So a lot of value. Lance Lynn, pitching for the White Sox. He's pitching really well right now. He's cut back on his sinker usage in his past eight starts. In those eight starts, his skill interactive ERA is 2.69, had a lot of strikeouts, very few walks. He is facing a poor offense here. The White Sox are facing a lefty. Usually that used to be like, okay, automatic bet on the White Sox. It's not as much that as it used to be, but their WRC plus and the current active roster is back up to 116 versus lefties. So it's still preferable to a righty and it is still a good spot for the White Sox for sure. Now, I was on the White Sox last night. They lost. I did not get good movement in my favor in that one, but I feel a lot better about Lance Lynn than I did about Lucas Giolito. I just thought the White Sox were a bit undervalued at minus 135 there. Didn't work out. I am willing to go back to the well here as well. Now, I do think that because it's the White Sox offense in a good spot and Lance Lynn pitching well, you could put some thought to the run line here. The White Sox are plus 114 to cover uh, minus one and a half right now. I think that's pretty fair, uh, but again, the constant discussion here is that typically the run line market will have a higher hold than the money line market. That's true here too. The the hold in the run line market is 4.5%, so you're paying a 4.5% tax effectively, whereas in the money line market, it's 4.1%. When in doubt, go with the lower hold market. That's why I will go with the money line here, but if you don't want to lay... Minus 196, you're not trying to just, you know, grind out some profits. I get that. Um, you could go with the run line here at plus 114. My personal preference, though, is a money line at minus 196. And the White Sox, again, you can get minus 190. Check that out uh, at your available books. Uh, but if minus 196 is your best number, I would be okay with that. So the two money lines I feel best about for today are the Mets at minus 156 and the White Sox at minus 196. Let's go back to that uh, that Mets versus Dodgers game and talk about some strikeout props here. I am tempted by DeGrom over eight and a half strikeouts. Uh, that number is now minus 122 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So we are seeing some movement towards the over on this number, but I don't have a lot of data on pitchers similar to DeGrom because I projected out, I think, like 1,300 starters this year. And I've never had a projection higher than DeGrom's. 10.11 strikeouts, the strikeout projection for DeGrom for me tonight. I don't know the over rates on eight and a half uh, at that number. I'm guessing it's pretty good, but it's a eight and a half is a big number in terms of strikeouts. He is facing the Dodgers. He's not getting like a full, full pitch count leash just yet. I do bet this one personally because I, 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 Figured 10.11 is probably enough, but I don't think I'd recommend it necessarily. There is a difference. Like I'm willing to bet more things than I'm willing to recommend. So I did bet it. I want to make that clear, but I also want to make clear that I don't have data to back this one up and say, yeah, you should definitely go out and ha you know hammer this one because I don't know what his overalls actually are because it's such an outlier projection. So if you want it, go ahead. Uh, but I can't like put full faith behind this one just because I don't have data to tell you what his actual over odds are. So keep that in mind at the ground. But I think that minus 122 over eight and a half is pretty fair if you want more exposure to that game. The one I like more and the one I can quantify is Anibal Sanchez under four and a half strikeouts. That's minus 156 at FanDuel. And I think that's the best price I've seen thus far. And there are a couple of factors in play for liking the under here. The first one is, and this is the biggest one for me, is pitch count. It seems like they are scaling Sanchez back right now because he's gone 79 and 81 pitches in his past two starts. That's while letting up just one earned run between those two starts. It's not like he's been ineffective. He's just getting yanked early for whatever reason. Four and a third innings in one, five in another. It could just be that they're, you know, it's a lost season. They don't really care what they see from Sanchez. That could be the factor there. That's the primary thing for me. The second thing is that Sanchez is just a low strikeout pitcher. 17% strikeout for him across eight starts this year. 
even we go back to before the pitch count got reduced for Sanchez, if you assume the pitch count goes back up, he topped four and a half strikeouts just once in his six starts with a longer pitch count. I have Sanchez projected for 3.12 strikeouts today. I have his under odds at 73.3%. So at minus 156, pretty good value here. I am okay plugging in under on Sanchez. I feel better about the Sanchez under than I do about the DeGrom over. So if you're picking just one strikeout prop for today, I would go with Anibal Sanchez under four and a half strikeouts, minus 156 currently at FanDuel Sportsbook. But again, under odds for me, 73.3%. So would be willing to go a bit longer than that on that one as well. So hopefully some good stuff for baseball for today. Monday was a good good slate. Didn't do well last night, but we'll see if we can get a bounce back here on this Wednesday. Okay, let's take a look at some motor racing stuff for this weekend, beginning with the Cookout Southern 500. That is the NASCAR Cup Series at Darlington. We'll talk about Formula One and the Dutch Grand Prix in just a bit. And this is a race where my numbers are pretty far off in the market. And that is concerning, always. You don't want to be super deviant because that means you're probably betting against people who are putting a lot of money in this market, betting against people who make these lines who are very smart. It is unnerving. But the last time this happened was in Richmond. And great race for me there. We talked about Kevin Harvick to win at 16 to 1. He did win there. Joey Logano was undervalued there. He dominated that race. So I'm actually okay being a bit different at a track that has some similarities, honestly, to Richmond in Darlington. So I want to run through what my numbers are saying here. They are showing value on four separate outrights, and three of them I agree with. One of them is Ryan Blaney. I don't agree with that one. He is terrible at Darlington relative to other tracks. My numbers can't quite catch up to, uh, can't quite encapsulate how bad he is at this track. So he is showing value there, but I'm not going to bet it. So I want to make that fully clear. I am on board with Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., and Christopher Bell. Let's talk about those three guys and what markets I'm plugging them in here. Logano, 9-1 to at FanDuel Sportsbook, but you can get him at 10-1 to elsewhere. I have him at 12% to win this race. He won the first Darlington race, so that's obviously a major factor here. Second place, average running position. He did bump William Byron out of the way, but that kind of overlooks the fact that Logano was a dominant car for that race. And Logano's been great on every track with heavy tire fall off this year. There have been four races at tracks with massive, massive tire fall off. So Darlington, both Richmond races and Fontana. And in those races, Logano's aggregate average running position is 4.8. Nobody else is better than 8.0. We have um, Denny Hamlin at exactly 8.0 and we have Ryan Blaney at 8.0 as well. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. 8.8. And then at 9.3, we have William Byron. So Logano has been an outlier in how good he's been at these heavy fall off tracks. Logano also on Gateway, another track with uh, where that requires some speed, but also blends braking and off-throttle time. I'm very okay being higher than the market on Logano here. That happens to me a lot, but I think at this race specifically, given what he did here in the spring, no objections. I'm fully on board with Logano at 9-1 to or 10-1 to to win this race. Truex is a bigger question mark, uh, though we do get more relaxed odds on him. He's 11-1 to to win at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, he's not in the playoffs. That's why this is a weird dynamic, uh, and that is a concern. We could see Joe Gibbs Racing prioritize our other three cars, like specifically Chris Rebell's pit crew sucks, and we could see them move some of those guys, uh, move Truex's crew over to Bell, nor to Adel Bell, who is in the playoffs. So we could see some changes here. But Truex, very, very good at this track. He is an outlier in terms of non-playoff drivers, because typically you see drivers in the playoff win, but like Truex finished the season like fourth in points, fourth or fifth in points, didn't make the playoffs. I don't think that's an indictment of him and should fully push us away from him here. Truex has led more than half the laps in two of the past four Darlington races. He was great in Richmond, heavy tire fall off there. It's hard to know how much the playoff issues ding him, but I have Truex at 12.3% to win this race, up from 8.3% implied. That's a four percentage point gap. Do we ding him four percentage points? Ding him like, uh, you know, two thirds of his win odds or ding him a third of his win odds because he's not in the playoffs? I'd probably say no. So I'm willing to bet Truex despite this at 11 to one to win this week. It is a concern. I want to make that very clear, but I do still think that we can buy into Truex here. Bell is the thinnest outright value on the board of these three. He's 5.9% for me versus 5.0% implied. So instead of going the outright, uh, since I had Logano and Truex, I went the podium at six to one for Chris Bell. His podium odds for me are 19.2% versus 14.3% implied. Darlington historically has not been his best track, but 
not terrible here. He was very good here back in the spring. He had a, a seventh place average running position, finished sixth in that race. He was also tremendous in both Richmond races. Uh, that has massive tire fall off. He is in the playoffs, which could help him as well. I think the podium market is the best market for Bell, where, whereas I prefer the outright markets for Logano and Shrek. I'd also mention that Eric Jones, uh, if you can find him, I, I got 70 to one uh, to win this race. If you can find that on Jones, that would be a value. Also a non-playoff driver, so keep that in mind. But he's very good at, at Darlington. We've seen him have good speed this year. 10th place, average running position uh, back in the spring at this track. So I do like Jones, uh, but my favorite guys for outrights are Logano and Truex, despite the weird dynamics with Truex for this week. In addition to the outright bets, I like top 10 bets on Logano and Truex too. Logano, minus, two, uh, minus 210 at FanDuel Sportsbook, Truex minus 150. I've got both those guys above those marks this weekend, and that's after they move from their open. Uh, Truex open minus 140. Logano, I think, was minus 185 or somewhere in there. So they would move, but not far enough where they're no longer values for me. I still think those are good bets to, to grab right now. So overall, just being high on Truex and uh, Bell, or Truex and Logano. I would also say in group bets, I found a lot of value in Bell. Um, he is plus 650 top Toyota at seats. So I think he's 7-1 to one at, at DraftKings. I've got him around 18% there, so uh, check around for other markets on Bell. He's showing value in a lot of spots for me. Not as much in the outright market, but top Toyota, uh, podium markets, all those things. Group ads, they do like Christopher Bell there. Let's talk about Formula One now. They will be at the, their second race out of the break for Formula One for the Dutch Grand Prix. In the outright markets, I am showing some value in Ferrari at plus 220. They're a good amount above that for me, but my model, I think it's too low on Max Verstappen. Um, Obviously, a home race for him. You know, got that narrative. Uh, he was insanely fast this past weekend. And I don't think my my model's fully capturing how good he was. So I'm showing value in the Ferrari outright at plus 220. I'm not going to bet that, though, because I think that Verstappen is going to be so tough to top in this race. One where my numbers, and I agree, is being high on the McLarens. Both McLarens. Yes, both for this week. I'm showing value in the top 10 odds for both Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo. And I also do show a slight edge on Norris's top six odds at plus 130. The top 10 numbers are minus 270 for Norris and plus 115 for Ricciardo. Lando's been right on the edge of the top six recently. He has been sixth or seventh in uh, five of the past or four of the past five races. And he's backed it up with really good speed and practice, pretty good qualifying times. Lando has been top 10. In 10 out of 14 races this year, which is 71%, his implied odds are 73%, but they've been on the rise recently. McLaren has, I think, at least a little bit. The speed for Norris has been better of late, so I'm fine with both the markets for Norris. The, the T6 bet and the T10 bet, I think both those are values for Norris that I do buy into for this week. And the T6 odds uh, were plus 130. T10 was minus 270. Ricardo. Might be a tougher sell for you and tougher sell for me initially too, because I have been, uh, I, I first ran my formula one model for the second arrest last race last year. I had a bunch of head to heads against Ricardo in the, in the final race of the year. And I'm not sure how much money I've had on Ricardo at all this year for good reason. He's been pretty bad. So my numbers have been low on Ricardo for a while now, but I think he's undervalued. Finally, the, the sentiment has spun enough against him where he might actually be undervalued. Getting a top 10 is not a huge ask for Ricardo. Obviously, it's now official that he will not return to McLaren next year, but they will give him good stuff. Do not get that twisted because they want to catch Alpine in the Constructors' Championship uh, for fourth, and they're 20 points behind right now. And my numbers do like Fernando Alonso this week. Also, Esteban Ocon is above Ricardo too, but like they need as many points as they can get, and that means they're going to give Ricardo the best equipment that they can. This is not a lame duck situation. Rather than finishes, uh, my model looks at a driver's speed score. And speed score is a number I made up that encapsulates practice time, qualifying speed, stuff like that to cancel out for weird stuff that can happen during a race. Of Ricardo's five best speed scores this year in 14 races, three have come in his past three races. He's turned that into just one top 10 finish, but historically, Ricardo has been someone who has outperformed his speed score because he's not super fast qualified, not super fast uh, in practice, but he has run decently well during the race. I do think plus 115 is a good number for Ricardo. I have him at 51% to finish top 10 versus 47% implied. I think that's a big enough edge to go in here. So again, my numbers have not been on Ricardo at all since I started running them, 
they are on him here, and they're also on his teammate Landon Norris, which makes feels better about buying into Ricardo. They need to push to catch Alpine, and I think they got a good spot to do it, a good shot to do it for this week. So uh, both Norris and Ricardo are showing value for me this week. Norris with the T6 and the T10 numbers, and Ricardo on the T10 at plus 115. That's all we got here for today. As mentioned, we'll be back later on tonight uh, with our week zero college or week one college football betting preview with Ed Fang and Parker Fleming. Get that by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, you're enjoying this daily format, make sure you leave a rating review because it does help us a bunch. We appreciate those of you who did so in the past. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcasts. Enjoy the baseball for tonight. Enjoy DeGrom versus the, the Dodgers. Enjoy some NASCAR and Formula One this week. Looking forward to talking to you later on once again to break down some college football. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 